Hello everyone, I'm M. Welcome to Tech Block. Today we are going to be overclocking the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X CPU on the ASUS X470 Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard. I'm going to see how far we can push the CPU, how far we can push the memory, seeing how memory impacts performance as well, and just stuff like that. So it should be a good time. This will probably be a multiple part series as I'm going to do this one where just I try a bunch of methods, I guess, on trying to overclock it. And then I'll probably do a follow-up video where I take some advice from you guys in the comment section down below and just try a bunch of different methods, I guess, of trying to overclock it. But I have tried quite a few methods myself. I have a rough idea of how far we can push the CPU and uh, the memory I've not pushed that far, uh, apart from just enabling a DLCP profile that's just on the motherboard and stuff. So well, that said, I guess, let's jump straight into it. Here we have the UEFI BIOS on ASUS. I'm gonna go over to Extreme Tweaker over here. And uh, the way I overclock things and the way I watched uh, Debauer overclock his Ryzen 7 2700X CPU is he went over to Performance Enhancer right here and he pressed on level three overclock now that's what i'm going to do as well but before we do that i'm going to set this to auto everything will be on default i've pretty much just loaded up the optimized default and we're going to run like a baseline test i guess for the system so the memory is currently set at 2400 megahertz the timings are just automatic so they're probably goddamn awful and the cpu is pretty much at stock speeds nothing at all has been changed so we're going to run cinebench we're going to run like some gaming performance tests see if there's any difference uh, going from like stock speeds to you know perhaps like a slight overclock for CPU and memory as well. Right so let's launch Cinebench real quick and let's see what kind of score we get. Uh, the highest I've gotten on Cinebench is 1913 uh, that's with like a level 3 or level 4 overclock on performance enhancer and like a bunch of other little settings so that's the best score I think I've ever gotten. Hopefully we can maybe beat that today that'll be pretty cool if we can pass you know 1950 maybe but uh, We'll see what happens, I guess. I'm not really expecting to go much further than 1913. Like that's already a pretty decent score, especially for this CPU. But our baseline, I guess, is going to be 1738. Let's run that one more time. We got 1738 for the first one. Then we got 1763 for the second run. Let's run it a third time and we'll do like uh, the average of the three results there. 1762 for the third result, okay. So let's divide that by three. Uh, the average score, I guess, for the free runs has been 1,754 uh, points in Cinebench for the stock results, I guess, for the CPU. Also, for those wondering what power plan I'm currently using in Windows, I've currently got it set to balanced as that is recommended apparently by Windows. And from what I've heard online, balanced is recommended for Ryzen. However, some people have also said that high performance is what you should be using instead. Uh, so I don't really know dude, so what I want to do is switch to high performance mode and uh, see if that makes any difference at all to like the stock clock speeds I guess. So let's just run the test again with high performance mode enabled on the power plan and see if that makes any significant difference to our Cinebench score. Uh, we got a score of 1769, a score of 1764, okay let's run that one more time. And the final score being 1767. Divide those results by three. That's an average score of 1766 with high performance mode. Let's switch that back over to balanced. Run the test again. See if that makes any difference. As I am curious whether the power plans make any real difference. With balanced, okay, we got 1754 for the first run, 1762. And run it for the final time with the final run being 17.65. So let's divide those results by three. Uh, so with high performance mode, we got an average of six points more, apparently. Let's try out Ryzen Balanced, okay? Okay, so this is now running Ryzen Balanced instead. The first run for the Ryzen Balanced power mode is 17.66, followed by 17.66 again. And for the final run, we got 1765. Okay, divide that by three. Uh, that's an average score of 1765. Okay, cool. <laughs> and for the final power plan test, I guess, let's turn on Power Saver and see how much our score drops by having Power Saver enabled. I'm like, I'm not expecting it to really drop by much. I mean, it's looking like it's going pretty fast. Okay, 17, 18. Uh, let's run it one more time. So quite a drop in performance there, enabling power saver mode. Now, why am I running tests in power saver mode? 
uh, no real reason. I'm just curious, I guess, to how much the score will drop. The second run got 1740 and run it for the final time and then calculate the average between the three results here. And for the final run, 1724, divide that by three. Oh, so for our results here, testing all these different power plans and windows, for high performance, we got an average score of 1766. For rise and balance, we got an average score of 1765. That's one point lower. For balanced mode, we got 1760, five points lower than rise and balanced. And then power saver, we got 17. 27. Uh, that's what, 33 points lower? So quite a difference there, especially in power saver, but uh, high performance and rise and balance were very, very close. Probably, you know, hardly any difference there at all in actual performance. And then for the final test, I'm going to run Unigen Heaven on the extreme preset, one benchmark run, just to get like, you know, some kind of rough estimate for FPS performance, I guess, and uh, whether overclocking memory and the CPU will impact the FPS in Unigen Heaven Benchmark 4.0. Actually, just before I run the Unigen Heaven Benchmark, I'm quickly going to go for check for updates on the Radeon settings, as apparently there are new software updates available. Whether that's a new driver or something, I don't know. It says software updates available. Okay, notifications. New software update available. Recommended. Okay, so there's like a minor little update here. Uh, let's just press on like express upgrade sure let's quickly update our graphics card drivers here before we run the unigen heaven benchmark radeon software adrenaline edition amd link available now you can overclock your pc through an app on your phone how crazy is that a resident evil 2 i think that's a game i got when i bought my graphics card but amd have not sent me a key yet uh, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> they gave me like three games, but I've not received keys for any of them. <laughs> yeah, I think they gave me like Devil May Cry, Resident Evil something. All right, so my graphics card drivers haven't updated. Let's quickly restart and then run Unigen Heaven. Okay, we're back in Windows. By the way, the graphics card is currently set to stock speeds. It's not been overclocked. We're going to be overclocking the Vega 64 card in a separate video entirely. Uh, so first we're gonna overclock the memory and CPU and then overclock the graphics card and hopefully try to get like some good scores in Fire Strike and Unigen Heaven, you know, all that good stuff. So for now, uh, if I go into Global Wattman here, it's currently set on balanced. So no custom overclocking has been applied to the graphics card in any sort of way. Right, so I've pressed on benchmark. I'll come back in a few minutes uh, once this is done running the benchmark and we'll see what kind of FPS we got. All right, so for Unigen Heaven, we had an average FPS of 111.8, a score of 2,816, a minimum FPS of 34.5, and a maximum FPS of 241.9. Right, so let's press restart and hop into BIOS, dude. No, no, delete, delete. <laughs> Just barely got that. All right, extreme tweaker. All right, so first things first, let's enable DLCP standard, AKA XMP for the memory and then select uh, DLCP DDR4 3200 16 18 18 36 at 1.35 volts. So this one I know is stable and works. However, I've never tried the other DLCP profile here, running at 3000 megahertz at timings of 15, 17, 17, 36 at 1.35 volts. I've never tried that one before, but we're definitely gonna try it out in this video and see if that one performs better than 3200 at 16, 18, 18, 36. But I know that this one here is stable and does work with my memory. And for those wondering what RAM I do have in my PC, I've currently got 32 gigabytes of HyperX Predator RGB RAM in there. Uh, running at 3200 megahertz at a cast latency of 16 that is what the ram was rated for when i bought it and uh, you know it seems to be working fine on ryzen without any problem really so let's enable this dlcb profile overclock the memory timings and uh, yeah let's just press ok and uh, run all the tests again and see if we have any improvements in either the fps or our cinebench runs our power plan is currently set to high performance and let's go ahead and run our three cinebench runs on here Okay, so already a noticeable improvement in performance, 1798 in the first run, 1793 in the second run, and 1796 in our third run. Let's divide that by three, and that's an average score of 1795. Quite the improvement already. 
All right, I'm now gonna run the exact same three tests on the rise and balanced mode. Oh wow, okay, 1803 for the first run on rise and balanced, 1797 for the second run, and a final score of 1794. Right, so let's divide that by three. That's an average score is 1798. Let's enable the balanced power plan. Okay, the first score is 1796. Then we got 1795 and a final run of 1791. Okay, add that up, divide by three. That's an average score of 1794. And once again, just for the lols, let's turn on power saver and see what we get. <laughs> first result of 1736. 1730 and then 1760 okay and divide that by three and average score of 1742 all right so i've enabled rise and balanced mode once again and i'm going to run units in heaven so now that we've overclocked our memory let's see if there's been any kind of improvement in fps so we have an average fps here of 112.5 a score of 2834 a minimum fps of 35.7 and a maximum fps of 242.1 Comparing that to the previous result that we had, there has been a minor increase in everything. So average FPS increased by 0.7 FPS, the score increased by around 18, the minimum FPS increased by 1.2, and the maximum FPS increased by 0.2. FPS. So very minor differences here and by the way both of these tests were run on the Ryzen Balanced power plan. Alright so we're back in BIOS. What I'm going to try to do now is enable a different DOCP profile or different XMP profile. This time trying 3000 MHz at 15, 17, 17, 36 at 1.35 volts. Now will this be stable? I have no idea because I've never enabled this DOCP profile before but let's go ahead and save changes and hope for the best. I wonder if we'll even be able to get into Windows having this DLCP profile enabled. I really doubt that this is going to be stable, but you know, you never know. Uh, Windows is loading. Things are fine. <laughs> Surprisingly enough. Okay. Will this improve our score or will it drop our score? As it has reduced the timings, but we've also lost 200 megahertz on memory speed. Alrighty then. So let's run Cinebench and see what we get. <laughs> By the way, we are currently on the Rise and Balanced power plan. The first result was 1780. The second result, 1781. <laughs> Very consistent. And then 1784. There we go. Divide that by three. That's an average score of 1781 on the Ryzen Balanced Profile. Let's switch over to High Performance and see if we get any better scores. First result of 1786. 1757. Okay. And 1788. So let's divide that by three, an average score of 1,777. Let's switch over to the normal balanced power plan. The first result of 1786, 1785, and 1786. Divide that by three, that's an average score of 1,785. And then once again, for the lols, let's run it in power saver mode for free runs. A first result of 17. 54 followed by 1756 and for the final result 1734 that's an average score of 1748 so by the looks of things the first DOCP profile uh, got us quite a bit better results than we're getting on this one here let's go ahead and switch the power plan back onto AMD Ryzen Balanced and then run Unigen Heaven Benchmark once again. Will these slightly lower timings help us improve our FPS? All right, so taking a look at the results here once again, this kind of slots in perfectly in between the default result and the previous DOCP overclock at 3200 megahertz. So, so this one's at 3000 megahertz with apparently slightly lower timings and uh, the FPS differences between these guys uh, you know, isn't much. On this benchmark run, we had an average FPS of 112.2, a score of 2825, a minimum FPS of 35.2, and a maximum FPS of 242.2. So this result here seems to nicely slot in between the stock configuration here and the slightly superior, I guess, DOCP profile that we had enabled earlier. So that's that, I guess. And uh, that's going to be it for today's video here. This is kind of just like the main little test I ran today, uh, checking out power plans and stuff. Still not entirely sure which power plan I'm going to be running. I think I'm still going to bounce between all of them and just see what's best, I guess. And when we eventually get around to overclocking the graphics card, I'm going to try a bunch of the power plans on that graphics card. But for now, I've just kept all of them on Ryzen Balance 
as that seems to be, you know, a pretty decent result the majority of the time on Cinebench at least. I have heard of like another plan being called uh, Rise and Ultimate or something like that. Uh, maybe that's something I should try out as well. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below if any of you have experience with the Rise and Ultimate power plan, if that is even a thing. But uh, today was kind of fun, you know, we kind of messed around with power plans as well as DLCP or XMP profiles for our memory. And the results I gathered today on Cinebench and Unigen Heaven seems to show that the DLCP profile at 3200 MHz, 16, 18, 18 and 36 timings at 1.35 volts seems to perform the best in both Cinebench as well as Unigen Heaven. So going forward in this overlocking series, I'm going to probably stick to that DLCP profile as that seems to give us the best results. So now that we know what memory profile we're going to be using, in the next episode I'm actually going to go ahead and overclock the Ryzen 7 2700X CPU, push it as far as we can and try to get the best Cinebench score as well as probably like you know a pretty good Fire Strike score as well as Unigen Heaven. So with all that said everyone, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.